Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse The Flash. Batman. It's the Batman from The Flash. It could be confusing for those of you who don't know what's going on with this movie. It is a Flash movie, but it features Batman predominantly in order to get people to watch. I'm not sure what's going on exactly, uh, but this is the Batman Multiverse the flash whatever i don't know what's going on with that part anyway this is the new michael keaton batman suit and i'm guessing most people are going to be interested in this because michael keaton is a very popular batman and we haven't had figures like this of him ever ever maybe so there's some pretty good stuff to talk about that's good news and there is some bad stuff but not too much so let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look Oh, by the way, I do have it slightly brighter than normal to film this just because this figure is actually, other than the mouth and symbol, solid black plastic. So it's going to be a little iffy, but hopefully this works out okay. All right, so this guy stands, not counting his ears, about 19 centimeters, including the ears, just shy of 20. That's going to make him roughly, we'll call it 7 and 3 eighths and then 7 and 3 quarters. Okay, time for a question of the day before we do anything else. This one's going to be somewhat controversial. I want to know if you think Michael Keaton was actually a good Batman, or do you think his popularity stems from him being the first, at least decent Batman? Maybe he was good, but he was really the first of this variety of Batman. So which one do you think, or maybe both, you can let me know, maybe you think it's both or neither, you can answer however you like, what led to Michael Keaton's Batman being so darn popular? Um, I think most people do like the way it was played and written, and I do think that being first helps, it always does, it can't not. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the aesthetic. It is fairly shiny in a lot of places, but not all the places, which means it is intentional. Uh, I think that's good except it needed to be more intentional. For instance, you can see the pectorals are fairly shiny and then this is kind of a pebbled finish so it doesn't have as much luster. Then the abs are shiny. Well, down here, they didn't continue this pebbled finish and I'm guessing in the movie, there's not just a cut going around his waist like that. So this part probably should have the same finishes right here. So I think they could have gone a little bit farther with it, but they did do a decent job giving him some texture despite being solid black plastic. You can see the difference between the gloss and the pebbled finish. Well, I think that looks pretty good. The bat logo is nice and clean, sculpt and paint-wise. I like that. Uh, the cowl, let's just go ahead and dive into that. I think the sculpt is pretty good, except for the weird antennae ears. They have balls on the end almost. It looks super goofy, and that would be very tricky to shave off for the average, average consumer, so you're stuck with these goofy-looking ears, which is super unfortunate. I do think the rest of the cowl is sculpted pretty well. Uh, it's really hard to separate the ears from the rest of it because it, it makes them look kind of goofy, but the nose is maybe a bit much, but otherwise it's solid. The paints are, they tried to be really good and I think the skin tone's nice and the lips are done well enough. Eyes are a little bit googly, but all in all, it's a decent enough looking head sculpt other than the ear tips. If he's on a shelf, you're not gonna notice the blemishes and it's gonna look pretty good. So I like that. I'm not sure what's going on here with this collarbone chunk sticking out of this rubber cowl. Uh, I don't think that's a thing in the movie at all, and it doesn't seem to actually lend itself to the cape at all. I'm thinking this is supposed to actually be where the cape connects, and then he just did it with plastic and cloth? I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll see, but to me this is just a weird, weird design choice because it's very obvious that it's there. So that's a little bit strange. We do have a cloth cape this time. We'll do a second question of the day. I ask this all the time, but opinions change in different viewers and whatnot. So cloth capes or plastic capes? For me, it really just depends. If it's gonna be a cloth cape, it needs to be the right material. Spandex is really good for uh, this scale cape. This feels like it's spandex with something else. It has a little bit of stretch, I think it looks pretty good. It hangs well enough. That's fine. Not wired though, so that is going to be a detriment. I tend to prefer all one medium. I don't like mixed media as much, but this does look fine other than the way it's connected up here. So I'm okay with this one. You guys can let me know if you like them in general and if you like this one. But it's a pretty good one as far as they go. It's got the right shape and everything, so that's nice. Proportions. Not bad, he's a little slender, a little trim, a little tall, I think, for a Michael Keaton Batman, even when he was young. This is, it looks stretched or pinched, however you wanna figure it, but it's definitely a little trim and the head does sit a little bit high off the shoulders, uh, a lot a bit high, frankly. If you see the one, there's one picture where 
I don't think he has his cowl on, but it's a screenshot where he's talking to Flash, I think. Uh, there's nowhere near that much of a gap between the top of his shoulders and his chin. So he's a little bit tall, but all in all, this looks pretty darn good. It's one of the better Batmans they've released, especially for a live action one. And here he is up against the Christian Bale Batman. So scaling is probably good. I don't know how tall Michael Keaton is. I always figured he was a little bit shorter than Bale. So that could be wrong. I don't know, but I'd like to think that he's a taller Batman than he is. So I think that's okay for me. But there you go, you can see that. Okay, so aesthetically speaking, it's not perfect, but it's pretty solid. Pretty solid. I don't know if this should have any of the brass color on it like it originally did. I assume it originally did. I think it did. I remember it being that way. It's not there now. We haven't seen the movie yet, or at least I haven't. Has anybody? Is it out? I don't think it's out. Is it out? Anyway, I'm gonna give it an eight for the aesthetic. It's pretty solid, could be better, but good enough. All right, let's talk about the accessories. He does come with a total of four hands. We have one trigger finger hand and one gripping hand on him in the package. Plastic is very stiff, so be careful with the gripping and trigger finger hands. Uh, we do also get some alternate fist hands. Thank you, Todd McFarlane. That's a good thing to have for Batman, I like that. We do get a silver version of his classic Batarang, I like that. We have a silver version of his grapnel gun, that is nice. We do get the DC display stand, which is the best of all. And then we get the collector card, which has a very dated looking artwork style, which I'm guessing was done intentionally. And I'm, I'm kind of for that, but I'm also kind of thinking these trading cards should have one consi consistent style, or at least it should be iconic for each character. But not a bad spread, I guess, so I will go um, I'll go 8 out of 10, one notch higher than what we usually see because we got four hands and two accessories, so that's pretty good. All right, let's talk about the articulation. The head is on a double ball peg, as you would expect from McFarlane Toy, so he can look down. A little bit of a gap, but that's not the biggest deal. He can look up nicely, so that's, that's good. I like that. A little bit of a touch-up on the paint job would help his face. But it's not bad. All right, leaning side to side is solid. This is one of their better neck joints. So of course he can turn and lean, give that bat attitude. I like it, I like it. And you can get, as long as you're careful, if you're cognizant of the gap, which you're gonna get, if you want a double ball peg to work, there's gonna be some gap. But as long as you're aware of it when you're posing, you can get some nice poses out of it and keep that silhouette nice and clean. So I like it. All right, now the cape is not wired and it doesn't let you like slide it to be like over the shoulder or not. You can put it over the shoulder, but because this part doesn't really move, it just bunches here. It doesn't look good, it doesn't drape properly, it doesn't come forward underneath. So I would say leave it back like that. Now the shoulders do have that ball peg that let them shift around. It's not really a butterfly, it doesn't offer that much actual adjustment. Uh, that's useful, but it does work this time, so that's good. The shoulder pads are connected to the actual shoulder, so I'm guessing... Is it? No way. There's no way the shoulders are that bad. Are they? No. I hadn't tried it yet. I thought they were going to flex upward, away from the body. They don't flex. You can't raise the arms better than that. Oh no, that's horrible. No. That's horrible. So the shoulders are just basically worthless going out to the side. Of course, you get your full rotation. Bicep swivel's fine. Somebody mentioned that the pegs are getting bigger, or the pins are getting bigger and bigger on McFarlane toys. That does seem to be the case. I'm not a huge fan, of, or I, I don't have a problem with pins generally, but when you start making them really big, that's a problem. And when you get really dislocated elbows like that, that's a problem too. When this arm bends, these two pieces should be touching and not because they go all the way because human arms don't really do that. They don't need to. They should be touching down here. So that's a little bit annoying. It's goofy looking. Probably avoidable when posing, but still. Uh, ball hinge wrists are there. You're gonna get less range than normal because of the way the hands are cut out. I'll zoom in real quick on the accessory hand. Because the ball sits so deep into the hand, you're gonna get a lot less range out of it, but it will look a lot smoother. So a little bit of a trade off there. Now for the torso. Does he lean back on that top joint? He does. Not a ton, but enough. Does he lean forward? He does. Not a lot, but maybe enough. It's better than most. Side to side is decent. You get your rotation. Let's try that bottom joint also. Both joints put together. He leans back pretty well. I like it. Leaning forward. It's not the most we've ever seen, but it'll definitely do. And then side to side. Yeah, this is a solid torso from McFarlane Toys. They finally, is this the first one? Did they do it for the first time? All right, that's good. Now, his diaper, 
decent sculpt. They didn't do a horrible job of keeping his shapes where they belong, but will he be able to actually pose his legs at the hip? Let's see, going forward. You do have to stretch it and you can see it lightening up just a little bit on the edges there. You're probably not gonna be able to see it on camera, but you can get the leg up to just about horizontal. So that's pretty solid. Going back, will the cheeks stretch? Just a little bit, but probably enough. You don't really need to bring your leg back that far. Going out to the side, uh, it's really gonna stretch right here. But you can get almost to splits with, uh, without stretching too much. So that's pretty good, I like that. Is there a thigh swivel? There is not, or both of mine are completely stuck. And now it's time for the cake rating. It is acceptable. His suit is a little bit of a thicker suit, so I'll give him a little a little bit of a leeway there, but not great. He's only gonna get about a four. There's some cake in there for sure, but I don't know if it's the best cake you've ever had. All right, double jointed knees with gigantor pins. Uh, not bad, good range, of course, and this does let us see our proportions are pretty good. The hip comes up to about here, and the foot comes up to about there. Maybe we could lose a little bit of length here, but it's pretty solid. So that's decent, I'll take that. Uh, I did wanna mention this, I didn't mention it in the aesthetic because I forgot, but his boots are painted to look dirty, and it's the only part of him that has it. It's kind of like a brownish, yellowish baby poop color. Dry brush on top of the black. If we can focus on the front boot camera. See that? That's the only place anywhere on the figure that looks like that. It's just the boots, so it's a little bit weird. Because if you're gonna have boots completely dirty all the way up to the tippy top consistently, it would probably go up everywhere else a little bit too, at least on the calf. So that's a little bit strange. There is no boot swivel. Ankle joints are sculpted ball hinges. They do go back and forward nicely. How many positions? So that's one, two, three, four, five. So that might be an extra notch. It works well enough. I didn't, he did stand right out of the package, which is a first for me uh, from McFarland Toys. So you might be able to find the sweet spot. It seems to be not as bad as other figures. So that's decent. Of course, you can rotate that for a really good ankle rocker. So that is good. And then lastly, we have a toe hinge, which is well placed, well sculpted, well enough anyway, and it's not super floppy. So this is a pretty decent release. Is it as good as it could have been? Uh, definitely not. Uh, without even costing more. I mean, they could have just tweaked a few things and made it better, like the shoulder pads could have been glued lower so that it could flex, things like that. But it does pose pretty well. I will give it for McFarlane Toys an eight out of 10. There's nothing crazy good going on here. And there are some things pulling it back, but it's not bad. I think most people, especially since if you're watching this, you're probably a Michael Keaton Batman fan, you're gonna be happy with this. It's, it's one of McFarlane Toys better Batman figures doesn't have crazy bad proportions or anything, maybe slender, but ultimately it looks pretty decent and it functions pretty well and it comes with a few extra accessories. I think this might be a bit of a winner. For McFarlane Toys, I'm gonna give this, I wanna say nine out of 10, but it does have some serious problems like the shoulders and, and the tips on the ears looking really goofy for Batman, that's kind of a no, non-starter. I'm just gonna keep it at eight. Eight out of 10 is the final verdict on this release but only because it's being held back by a few select issues. Otherwise, it's pretty darn good. So there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you should. I have new videos every day but Wednesday and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.